Hello and welcome to my scripting video. Um, I figured I'd done some scripting videos before, but I can't find any sign of them, or at least nothing specifically about this. So I'm going to say this is the first one, unless I run across some later. Um, I've been wanting to get back into programming videos, um, but I want to ease back in with something simple before I get into the harder stuff. So I thought this would be a good choice. Um, a lot of scripts can be knocked out in one session um, in an hour or less, so it'd be a good thing to um, kind of get into first. So I um, thought I'd go through a little bit first of just what is scripting or what is a script. Um, because a script is a program, but a program isn't necessarily a script. Um, and it's there's not a hard and fast um, division between the two. Um, typically, I think of a script as, first of all, it's written in the scripting language, which is something I'll come back to. It's not a compiled program. Um, that is pretty hard and fast, but it's also usually short. It's something that's not terribly complicated. It's usually one file, although it might involve more than one, but it's usually not a very complex thing. It's not something you need to really flowchart out or write a lot of documentation about or anything like that. It's usually, you know, manageable um, in, a, in a short time. Um, a lot of scripts may just be a couple of lines or they may be a, a page, but they're generally not huge things, even though you can write huge things in scripting languages. Um, so if you're going to write a program of, of any sort or script or, or not, the first thing you need to do is figure out what does it need to do. Um, a lot of people will start by asking what, what language should I use, and that's really the second step. The first step is figuring out what does it need to do, because then you'll be able to figure out what language you should use. Um, so in this case, what I want, the, the, the idea here is that I have games that I've bought from good old games. Um, they're all in this folder, GOG games, and there's they are. Um, so you get to see what kind of games I play, I guess, even though I haven't played probably half of these, but I generally grab them when they go on really good sales. But anyway, so the way you would play one, the way they're installed is they're all here under GOG games, and you would go into the directory of one, like Don't Starve, and then there's a file start.sh which you'd run and that's how you start the game so you start them all the same way by going into their directory and running start.sh so it's like a three-step thing to you know cd to gog look at the games see what you want to play cd into that run start.sh you know it's not a huge amount of labor but it's a little bit annoying um and the other thing that's a little bit annoying about it is if you run it from a terminal a lot of these games are full screen or they're not going to necessarily play nice if they're popping up where there's already a window. Um, I use a, a window, um, I use i3 which is, is a tiling window manager so whatever windows I have fill the screen, um, well whatever panes I have within that window it gets a little repetitious with what's a window. But anyway I don't necessarily want to run the game here in this terminal. I'd rather run it in a new window this, that has nothing in it. And so that gets a little bit tricky. Um, and that's where it would be nice if you could run it from D menu, which is a little utility that lets you run any command that's in your path from just from anywhere, from any window, whether it has a window in it or not yet. So now that I've said window about a thousand times, um, so the idea is that this will just be a script that lets you choose a game and play it without having to do this manual stuff. So that kind of goes so that kind of gives you an idea of what it needs to do. It needs to come into this directory, it needs to get a list, show you the list somehow, let you choose a game, and then go into that directory and do start.sh. And it needs to do all that without needing to be within a terminal. So now that I've thought it, thought through what it needs to do, now I can talk about what language I should do it in. Now, sometimes people ask what language they should learn, and I would always say at least a few. I mean, as many as you can manage, as you know, as many as you can learn 
and be capable in them. Um, I'm not an expert in a lot of languages. I'm, I'm, you know, pretty pretty proficient in a few, and then I can muddle along in some others. Um, but I would say you should learn, you should learn enough shell that you can do things at the command line because the shell, the, the shell language, the born shell language is what you use just when you're typing stuff into the, into the command line. So like I was doing here, you know, CD into whatever, um, you can do loops a little bit for I in whatever, do echo I done. So it's, it's a, it's a complete programming language, but it's not necessarily you want to use for everything. It's mostly what you want to use when you're doing just file system stuff, when you're moving files around or running you, uh, other utilities on files like grep or sort or something like that, then that's when you're just doing that kind of stuff, stuff you could type in at the command line. That's when you want to put it in a, in a shell script. Um, I won't be doing that here because here I'm going to want to do some um, regular expression matching, some substring matching on these names. And while you can do that in a shell, um, in a shell script, it's not the most convenient way to do it. Um, and so I'll be using Perl, which is a program that has a really powerful regular expression system. It's just more designed for that. Um, it's more designed for um, processing text and doing things with text. So um, now if I wanted something, if I needed to be really fast, then you would go with like a compiled language like C, where you get it compiled down to a machine executable that then runs as, as fast as anything but assembler, which you wouldn't want to try to do this and that definitely. Um, but I don't need speed here. So I can go for something that's sort of in the middle that's a more complicated language than just a shell, but not as difficult as a compiled language like C. So we'll go for something in the middle. And a lot of times that's where you end up with, with this stuff is something like Perl or Python that's a, a, a powerful enough scripting language to do anything, but you can also knock out small stuff with it pretty easily. So, coming back here then. So since I've chosen Perl, now I can start writing the, the script. So all my Perl scripts start with user bin and Perl, which just runs runs it under whichever Perl is first in your path. Um, and then there's just some stuff here that I always use. Um, use version 5.10, just gives you all the features that are in Perl 5.10. Use warnings means it'll warn you about stupid things you might do. And use strict means it's going to um, require you to do certain things like declare your variables before you use them. Those things just keep you from making typo mistakes and some things like that. So they're just a good thing to use all the time. Um, I'm going to use some smart comments possibly. Um, those are comments that actually do things sometimes when you're running your script. So I might use those. I don't know for sure. I might use data printer. Um, that's a module that lets you print out data structures in a nice looking way. So if I'm ever wanting to just see what's in a variable, I might use that. Um, smart comments can also show you that kind of stuff. I need to turn on Perl mode here because I just started this file. And I want to turn on color. I didn't, that stuff's not important, just something I want to turn on. <clears throat> okay. So those are a couple things I might use, and I'll be adding other, other modules up there in a bit. So the way I want to run this, I want to type gog at the command line, and then just part of the name of a game. I don't want to have to type in the whole name, just because I may not remember exactly how it's spelled or whether it has a the on the front or whatever. So I just want to be able to type in something like Gog Starve and then have it give me a list of the games that have that in them, that have Gog Starve in them. Or not Gog Starve, just Starve. So I'm going to have, so I, so it's going to have one argument always. And so that's the first thing is I'll say, um, 
I'll say die, and then usage gog. Uh, let's let's say game name. Yeah, we'll call it game name, even though we don't have to have the whole name. But anyway, okay. Um, unless argv equals one. So if there's one argument, then it'll go on. If there's not, it'll stop and say that. Um, and the nice thing about scripting languages is you can run it right away. You don't have to wait until you've compiled it or something like that. So we can go ahead and run it right here. And uh, let's see, what did I forget to do? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'm actually, I'm actually writing this on a different machine than the one I'm trying it out on. So, um, <laughs> there we go. Okay. So can't locate smart comments. So I have to install that first. No big deal. I guess I haven't used that on this machine yet. So I use CPAN minus to install modules. Um, I I probably shouldn't get too far in the weeds on on uh, don't have data printer installed either. On installing Perl and all that. If I do that, I guess I should do it in a different uh, a different video. But basically, I install my own local copy of so that I'm not messing with the um, with the system copy. Okay, so if I run it without an argument, it craps out and says usage gog game name. If I give it an argument, it's happy. Okay, so back to the program. All right, so the first thing I need to do is go to the directory. So that's going to be home... I think it's got a space in it. Yeah, it's just a space in capital games. Okay, or die. And I use this a lot. Something or die. And then the dollar sign bang is just whatever the current error is. So if you say change directory to that directory or die, if it can't change the directory, then it dies and tells you why. So like if I if I misspell this, we'll come back here. See, no such file or directory at line 10. So I would come back to my program then here at line 10 and say, oh, I, I goofed up because that doesn't exist. Okay, so ch -der, ch change dir in there. And now I need to get the list of games that are in there. So to read the list of things in a directory, you use open dir. And so I'll just say my dir. And then just the dot for the current directory. And again, we'll or die. Now we can read from dir on my game. Let's see. Uh, now I want to make that a for loop. My game in. Okay, now we could just do read dir on dir, but read dir will give you everything in the directory, including, if we come back here, you'll see the first two things are dot, which just means the current directory, and then dot dot, which means the parent directory. We don't want those, so we just want the other stuff. So we want to filter out anything that starts with a dot, basically. There could be other things with dots that I might create for other reasons, but I'm never going to have a game directory that starts with a dot, so we want to filter those out. So after doing the read directory, we want to grep for um, anything that's not, and now this is where... I'm going to start, I've, I've been reading through Perl best practices lately and I'm trying to adopt some things. So 
um, this is going to be a regular expression and they, they recommend that you use braces which is probably a good idea so backslash a means the start of the string and then we want a dot and then smx just means some some things about the regular expression that make it good um, I forget what each one S, S means to treat the string like a single string, which it already would be anyway, but um, if you happen to have a multi-line string, that makes it treat it sensibly. Um, M, M also has to do with multi-line strings. It's sort of the, the opposite, but both basically those two together make it just treat the, the, whole, the string as a whole string and the way you expect it to work. Um, X means it's going to ignore this white space in here, which lets me add some white space to, to make things clearer. So now we're going to grab out everything that starts with a dot. Or keep everything that doesn't start with a dot. Let's put it that way. Now, the other thing I want to grab out is anything that um, ends with back. Because occasionally, if I'm, say, I'm updating a game. And I want to keep a backup. I want to make a backup copy so that just in case something goes wrong, um, I'll copy it to another directory. I'll just I'll just make a copy of it, and I always call my backups back B A K. So I'm not going to want to run a backup either, and so I want to I want to grab that out. So we're saying grep if it's not starting with the dot and it's not ending in um, dot back and then the ending is the backslash z okay now I gotta think this through a little bit because I'm I could confuse myself with these nots and these ands. So I'm saying it's not this and it's not this. So is there a better way I can, I can put that? Well, I could say this or this and then reverse it after that. Uh, but I don't think that's really any better. So let's see if this works first of all make sure I don't have any mistakes in this. Oh, I need to add the SM, SMX here. It can get a little confusing because I've got the braces for the grep right here in this one. And then I've got these braces inside here for the regular expressions. So it can get a little awkward and I could change these to something else. Like I could, uh, I could change these to brackets, square brackets. Maybe that'd make it a little clearer. I could use pipes like that. Maybe that's a little clearer. Um, whoops. In Perl best practices, they recommend pretty much always either slashes or curly brackets. But I think there are occasions when something else can be clear. I don't like mixing slashes with backslashes. That that gets to be hard to read really quickly. Um, Okay, so just to see if this is working, let's say game and see what we get. Okay, so I think that pipe it to more. Yeah, that's given us everything except the dots and I don't see the back in there either. Nope. Okay. So good. That's doing what we want it to do. Except we also want to check it for having our argument in there. So we need to add one more. Except this one won't be a not. This will just be a regular expression looking for argv0, which is the first argument to our script. Okay, all we care about is that it's in there and I'm going to add an I here to say case insensitive because I don't want to have to remember whether 
was it starve with a capital S or, you know, that kind of thing. So now we're saying has to have argument in there like starve case insensitive and it has to not start with the dot and it has to not end with back. So let's see what we got now. Okay, it trimmed it right down. All right, so now it knows which game it is. It could go right ahead and pop into that directory and run it. But what if there's more than one? Let's put that back. Let's, what if there's more than one game that has whatever I, whatever I put in? Um, see STA let's say I think well I think there's only one game as STA well no there's there's four so then we need to have a choice so we get two possibilities here well three possibilities really there could be zero matches in which case it can't do anything right there could be well no it could do something we'll come back to that there could be one match that's that that's the simple the simple one if there's one match, it should go ahead and play the game. If there's more than one match, it should give me a choice between the ones that match. Now, what if there's zero matches? We could just not do anything, but that's going to be weird because uh, let's say I'm in an, an empty, I'm in an empty window, and I type, I, I run my D menu and I type gog starve, but I misspell it, and it just sits there nothing happens because it couldn't find a game and so it just it just quits and nothing happens well I'm gonna be confused I'll be waiting for my game to start some of these games um, don't start doesn't take long but some of these games can take you know a little while to, to come up and so I will, I'll just be sitting there staring at a blank screen wondering what's happening so we don't want that so the other option would be since I only have I don't know what there's 30 game you know 40 games here 50 maybe if it doesn't match anything, it could just show them all to me. It could just give me a choice of all of them. And I think that's that's the way I'm going to go. Um, so, so we've got three possibilities. If there's one match, play the game. Two plus matches, give me a choice. Yeah, it'll be matches. And zero matches give me a choice of all the games all right so now i have to rethink this a little bit because at this point i'm not going to have all the games right because i'm filtering them out right here So I need to change that. So first of all, I need some place to store the, the, the game names. So let's say my games, all right? And we'll initialize that to an empty list, an empty array. All right, so we wanna get all the possible games into that array, whether I end up using them all or not. So let's take this, cut this out, and I'll just put it here as a comment for now. Because we will use that, but we're not going to use it right away. So first of all, we've just got to get... You know, yeah, let's just get the games into a list first after taking out the ones with the dot or the back. So we can do that with... Why is it not... weird I got some weird um, I think my something here is confusing it because I've got some weird uh, indentation stuff happening hmm interesting um okay so We'll just push game 
which is this game right here for my game, into the array games. Okay, so now we need to So now we need to look and see which ones actually match match our argument. Okay. So let's have another so games is going to have all the games. Let's have another one called matches. Oops. So once we've pushed Boy, it is really pissing me off. Um, <laughs> see if that's what's throwing it off. No? Change these to slashes, see what that does. No, it still doesn't like it. Oh, 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 oh. I took out too much stuff here. I need to, I need to put my grip back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I I had taken too much stuff out of there when I took that that check out of there. All right. So we're grepping now for not a dot and not a dot back. And then we're pushing the 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 title onto games. But then we also want to check it to see if it matches our other thing here, argv0. Oops, I don't need to be using those here. And that's going to be, in case it's sensitive. And if that matches, then we want to push it also in the matches. I don't really like having the two arrays, but I think that's going to be the best way to do it. Because we've got to somehow, I mean, other than going out and reading them again, if we end up with zero matches, I don't want to do that. You don't want to be hitting the file system twice if you could just save something in memory. Okay, so I don't like that it's four spaces, but that's all right. I'll live with it for this time. I usually do two space indentation, but... Um, I can live with four. That's what it's doing by default. Um, all right. So now we've got our games. All our games and games. We've got our matches and matches. And so now we, we want to ask if matches equals one, because that's our simple thing. What do we do? Well, we play the game. So playing the game means changing directory into the game directory, which is going to be matches zero. Since there's only one, it's going to be the zeroth one. And we'll do a or die just out of habit, even though it shouldn't be able to. But it could if there's if I accidentally put a file in that in there that wasn't um, a directory that had a name that didn't that wasn't a dot back it didn't start with a dot but it wasn't a directory or if it was a directory that wasn't um, executable or something like that not likely to happen but it could happen so i'll let that die there and if something weird goes on um so it should change directory into there and then it should just run start.sh okay and then the back the back quotes just mean to run that now that's going to run it and wait on it so this script isn't going to die until it's done you know until the game is done which i'm not going to worry too much about because that's not you know you're not talking about something that's taking up a lot of resources here um you could exec it um so that this can go ahead and die but it's it's really not that important so now that's that's if we have one match. Like I said, that's a very simple solution. And we don't know yet that it's going to work for sure, but that's where we start. Now, if, if matches is more than one, 
and when you do this this is one of the Perl has a lot of these nice little convenience things that other languages are, are too good for um, sort of hacky little things but um, when you when you use an array in a scalar context like this when you're using an array but you're comparing it to a number like as if it's a, it's a number um, then it goes ahead and, and uses treats it like a number and the number is the number of things in that array so I'm saying how many things in the are in the array and is it more than one so if it's more than one then we want to do something with those names we want to give us a choice of those names so for now what I'm gonna do is say for um, my game in matches let's just say game and we'll deal we'll get to the uh, we'll get to the um, I would just say the um, the choosing part later let's get the the choice look we'll get this part worked out first and if matches equals zero then we don't even we don't even really need to compare that because we've already checked I mean we can't have a negative one that's not possible you can't have less than zero items in your array so in that case we're gonna say for my game in games because in that case we'll use all the games in our choice okay so for now while testing instead of actually running start sh I'm gonna run PWD which just tells you what directory you're in and so that'll tell us whether it's doing the change dir correctly here um, okay so now we can do some testing on this. So let's go to home directory, dog starve. Nothing happens. Okay, why did nothing happen? Hmm. Let's make sure I'm typing or running the right thing. Because that was how I confused myself before. Now I got the right thing going. Okay, so Oh, yeah, I've got to, I've got to say that it's just outputting it to nowhere if I don't. Dog starve. Okay, so it's telling me that's where it would be. It'd be in that directory. So that's the matches equals one option happening. Now, if I say gog sta, that's matches more than one that's happening. So it's telling me, okay, I've got these four matches. Okay. And if we say gogstaz, which isn't going to match anything, then it gives me the whole the whole list. Okay, so we're in good shape. Um, all right. So the next question is, how do we want to present the choice? How do we want to do the actual menu? Um, now, like I said, I want to be able to run this in an empty window. So we can't print it out to the terminal because we're not going to be in a terminal. You know, if I was just here in a terminal, we could just print them out here, maybe give them numbers so you could select a number and then run the game. But not going to be in a terminal. We've got to have some other way to actually run it. Um, so how would we do that? Well, I mentioned before there's a little utility called dmenu that you can use which I've got tied into i3 so that it's if I if I do a window D window if I hold the window key down and hit D it pops up this little menu at the top that you can I think you can see and it'll let you run anything that's in your um, that's in your um, uh, path but that's how it's set up in i3 you can you can use D menu in any program and you just need to feed it the items you want it to be selecting from. So come back here. So what we need to do is open a pipe to D menu, feed it the feed it our choices, one on each line, and then it'll give back the thing that the person chooses. 
So this will probably make more sense once I actually do it and demonstrate it. But um, let's uh, first we've got to open the pipe to D menu. Now we, we need to talk. This is going to be bidirectional communication with it, and so. There's a few different ways you could do it. Some are more complicated than others. The simplest way is to use, um, let's see, it's IPC Open 2. There's also IPC Open 3, which allows you to capture the third, um, the third uh, file descriptor, which is the error output of whatever you're doing, which in this case would be D menu. Um, I don't think we need that, it's not, not important. Um, so the way open to works is, well, first of all, you need to say my PID, which is the process ID of open to, and to refresh our memory, because I don't use this a lot, um, IPC open to, <coughs> you give it three well, three or more arguments. The first argument is the output from the child, from the thing you're opening, which is going to be D menu. The second one is the input for the for D menu, and then the last one is the command you're running. And if you're feeding arguments to it, you would put them separately, but we're not in this case. Just running D menu itself. So. Um, so out pipe, I just like to call them pipes because that's really what they are. In pipe, and then D menu. Uh, I don't want to put an or die there, but um, we'll just do a die unless PID. <clears throat> okay. So now the one thing you have to keep straight, which can be tricky, is that the out pipe means the pipe coming out of D menu, not the pipe going out to D menu. I mean, you could say it either way, but so you have to keep straight which one is which. So we need to write to the in pipe, which is D menu's in pipe, and get back out of it from out pipe. Okay. So one more thing we need to do here. If if there's one match, well, it just takes care of itself. If there's more than one, then we want to show the things that are in matches. If there's zero, we want to show the things that are in games. So just to, when we get down here, how do we know whether we want to use matches or games? Well, we don't. And so we will just say here, if it gets to here, then matches equals games. We'll just put that into matches so that when we get down here, we can just use matches either way. It doesn't matter. Um, and by the way, that reminds me up here, I'm going to need to put an exit because otherwise when this game finished, this would continue. And after the, after the if else block here, it would come down and start doing this stuff. We don't want it to. If it finds one exact match, we just want it to play the game and then exit. We don't want it to keep on doing this stuff with the menu and so on. All right, so now we've got our pipe open to D menu and we need to print to it and get back from it. So we've got to print to, like I said, to in pipe. And we're going to print the matches to it. So You know, could do that a couple of ways. Um, probably the clearest way is going to be to do for my game in matches print in pipe game new line. Okay, and so that's going to print all the matches, whatever's in matches, is going to print them two in pipe, one on the line, which is what we want. Okay. And then we can get their answers. Well, then we get our answers back 
or answer. Well, yeah, we'll get our answer back from out pipe, the pipe coming back out of D menu. But before D menu answers, it's got to get all the input and it's got to know it's done getting input. Otherwise, it can't offer the person the choice and get the answer. So to let it know that it's done getting input, we close the in pipe. And that way, D menu can go on and do its business and then we get the out pipe back. And the other thing you've got to do when you're using Open2 here, or that I believe you should do, is do a wait on the PID, which shuts down that child. Um, so your program won't sit around waiting on it anymore. Okay, and then for now we can just say, let's, let's say the answer. Okay, so there's quite a bit here in these few lines. We're opening a pipe a bi-directional pipe to D menu will die if that fails we print the games that we matched or that were all the matches which one way or the other we print them to D menu and then close it so it knows we're done printing to it then we get the answer back from the first line that it returns and we wait and then we say what the answer was okay. Now let's get rid of these because these would just be confusing now. Um, yeah, I guess it doesn't need to do anything there. Because it's already got the matches in matches. The only thing we need to do here is make matches equal to games. Okay. So let's see what happens. It's getting late here. I could be doing things all wrong. Okay, so GOG star still just does with the one thing, GOG STA. Okay, so now you can see up at the top, I hope, it's kind of small print, but it's offering me choices of the four games that match my STA. Okay, now I can, nice thing about D menu is I can start typing and... I guess I have to start at the beginning. No. Okay, no it doesn't. Huh. I thought it would let me start typing and narrow it down further, but I guess it doesn't. That may be an option I have to give it. But anyway, I can just use arrows to select the one I want here. And so let's say I select Stardew Valley and boom, it says Stardew Valley. Okay. So the other possibility is what if I do something that isn't in there? Now it's giving me a choice of all of them. And this is where I would really like to be able to narrow it down. I'm not sure why it's not letting me. Oh, it is. Oh, it's doing it um, case, okay. D menu is case sensitive, okay. Well, let's see if there's a way to change that. Ah, dash I, not surprising. Okay, so let's come back here. Um, so after D menu, we want to add dash I. All right. To make D menu case insensitive. So let's try it again. Gog, temptress, okay. So I can just start typing and narrow down if it, if it does give me all the games, then I can just start typing, or I can arrow through them and pick the one I want. Crypt of the Necro Dancer. It's a good game. Fun. Okay, so... That lets us choose our game. Now, what if you get to look in and then you think, I, I didn't want to play in those games. What happens if you just kill the menu without selecting anything. Well, let's try it and see what happens. Well, okay, maybe you can't. Maybe it's always going to have something selected. Well, let's try it this way. Let's say I start like that, and there's nothing that matches, and then I hit return. Okay, then it gives me back the just whatever I typed. Okay, I wasn't sure what it did if it didn't have a match. 
So, okay. So I'm always going to get something back. So I don't have to worry about whether answer is empty. It's always going to have something. So when we get down here, instead of say answer, we can do the change dir into answer or die. And that way if I type in something stupid, it'll just die because it can't go to that directory. And then start.sh. Okay. All right. That seems too simple, almost. Um, sometimes scripts are that way. Sometimes they almost seem too easy. Um, and I may be forgetting something. And the thing is, there's always more you could do. You know, you hack something like this out, and it, I don't know, it's been less than an hour. Um, and I had a lot of this worked out in my head already, but you hack something like this out pretty quick, and then later you realize, oh, I could, you know, I could add this feature. I could, I could let you put an option in to say whether you want to, Gosh, I don't know. Um, off the top of my head, I don't know what other options you would add to it, but um, maybe, oh gosh, maybe like if you say, well, I do want to play one of my backups this time, well, then you could turn off matching against dot back or something. I, I don't know. But there, but you'll think of things. Um, once you get something like this written, you'll think of things. You'll think, oh, it'd be nice if it did this or if it did that or if it did this this better or whatever. Um, and it also should be commented. It should, a lot of this should be commented to explain what's going on. Um, you know, explain why I'm like, this is, you know, you could say all games in case there are no matches, you know, that kind of thing. I've got, I've got some comments here that help, you know, so you know, what's, what it's, what's going on. You could add comments here to say, you know, this is matching against directories that start with a dot. This is, you know, whatever. Um, you could add another test in here to make sure they are just directories, which I don't really need because that's because that's all that's ever going to be there because it's my God Games directory. But, you know, you can do a lot of error checking, a lot of catching things like that if you want to get sophisticated about it. Um, okay, so let's try it. For real, so I need to uncomment that. Take out, no, I still need that exit. That's right, but I don't need this PWD thing. Okay, so I think everything is as it needs to be. So let's go to a blank blank window, and let's try it first of all with Starve, which should only match one thing, so it should just go ahead and play the game. And it's not. So why not? Can't exec. Okay. So why is that? Let's come, let's put that back in there. So we can see where we're at before it tries it. Okay, so let's go to GOG. Don't starve. Okay, so why does it think there's no start sh? Because I can see it, it's right there, right? Oh, 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 oh. I need a dot slash in front of it to say in that directory. Duh, I knew that. Um, okay, so we'll come to, that, come to the open window, try it again. Starve. Boom. It takes a little longer to load now that I installed the um, the extra pack for it. The whatever, the Hamlet and all that business. It's a, it's a heck of a good game, really. I wasted way too many hours on it. Um... Okay, so that works. It works when it matches one game. Let's try it when it matches a few. Okay, we're matching four of them here. I'm gonna pick Don't Starve again because I know it boots up quick, relatively speaking. So it's not working, what's happening? So let's try it back here again. Mm 
no such file. Oh, because of this again. Duh. Line 53. Is that line? No, that's line 53. Ah, no. Can't see it sure to answer. Interesting. Oh, I'll bet I need to chomp answer because each line it gets back from D menu is going to have. The answer looks funny. Looks like I thought I was misspelling it, but I wasn't. Each line it gets back is going to end with a new line. And so when it tries to change directory into answer literally, that doesn't exist because the directory names don't have new lines on the end of them. I'll bet that's what's going on there. So back to our empty window. Select don't starve. Yep, that was it. Okay. Yes, yes, when I say quit, I really mean it. All right, and so that leaves us one thing left. What if we start with something that's not there? Then it gives me all the choices. And I'll just select it one more time because it'll start. So yeah, I figured that would work without any trouble because that's really this, the same process once it gets past the match. Now that brings one more thing to mind is before I said, well, if it's run without, a, without an option, just die here. But what if I want to just go to my empty window and just type GOG and then look through my games? Well, it's going to die, right? And because I'm in this empty window without a terminal, it can't tell me why it died. It's just going to die. Well, that's not a very good solution. So let's come back. Let's take that out. And now, let's think about how this works. So we're already pushing it into all games, but we're here we're saying, okay, if the game matches this. But now, if I just type GOG, I don't have an argument for here. And so I'm going to have an error here, actually, if I don't type anything. Let's, let's just try that and see. Yeah, see, so yeah, use of uninitialized value, and it's going bonkers for some reason. Um, it's actually, a, well, it's a warning, not a, uh, but anyway. Um, so what I want to do then is, if there is no argument, just go ahead and do this, right? Because if there's no argument, that's the same. I'm going to treat that the same as if I put in something that doesn't match anything. I just want to get all the games in matches. So what I'll do is I'll say if not argv0 or if game equals if game has argv0 in it. Okay, so if argv0 doesn't exist, then I need the dollar sign there. If argv0 isn't, um, isn't there, or is empty, or if game matches this, then go ahead and push to matches. So I think that should work. Let's see what happens. Let's come back to the empty thing. Just type GOG. Yeah, and see now it's giving me all the games. And it should run just fine. Okay. All right. So there's our script. It's altogether, you know, 54 lines. There's a few comment lines in there. I've been leaving more white space these days than I used to. Um, just try to keep things from getting claustrophobic. Sometimes it's it helps to kind of sp spread things out a little bit. Um, so you know, we're looking at 50. 50 lines generously. I've got a couple of things here that I didn't even end up using. The smart comments in the data printer I never used. So I can take them out now that apparently I'm not going to use them. Um, so like I said, there's there's things you could do to nicen this up quite a bit, you know, in various ways to make it more robust. But 
a lot of times like this when I'm just writing a script for myself, you know, I'm not, I'm not publishing this. I'm not selling it, um, you know, or anything like that. It's just something I act out to make my own life easier. So if it works, it works. That's all it has to do. All it has to do is work. Um, and in a few years, I'll probably look at it and think, oh man, I, sh I could have done that better, but that's okay. It's, it's good for now. So that's scripting that's what scripting is like it's at least when i do it it's you start with your problem the thing you're trying to accomplish you sort of work that out little little note taking or maybe you just work it in your head um usually it's usually not a big enough problem that you need like i said that you need a lot of documentation about it or flow charts or anything like that and then you start knocking it out and as you go along you figure oh this it needs to do this it needs to do that um you know, like, and then like at the end there, we went back and said, oh, let's not just die if it, if there's, um, if there's no argument, let's handle that somehow. Let's do something with that. Um, so that's it. Um, I suppose I'll be back again with, I'm trying to come up with, I'm trying to come up with other script ideas that are short enough to do in an hour or so. Um, so they don't have to be multiple videos, um, so they're short enough for somebody to watch in a reasonable amount of time, for me to do in a reasonable amount of time. Um, so I'll be back when I come up with some, and of course I'd take suggestions too. Um, probably mostly, I mean, I probably won't do anything in Python just because I'm not good enough at Python to uh, to program and explain at the same time, probably. Um, but I might do some shell scripts if I can come up with something that would be best done that way. And, uh, I don't know, see what I come up with. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.